If you notice, one of the things that I do very well in all of these plays is is the dialogue. I, I mean, no one does dialogue as well as I do. I've never read anyone, whether it's a playwright, whether it's a novelist, whether it's anyone uh, who writes dialogue as well as I do. I mentioned in an earlier play how Gina's dialogue subtly changes throughout that play uh, with her age. Well, here we have probably three or four phases that we uh, see Chad. Chad, when he's talking alone with Angie. Chad, when he's trying to be... Uh, you know, bravado with uh, the Moros, Chad dealing with Wally, and then Chad when he's trying to ignore Wally. Uh, towards the end of the play, the last third or so of the the second uh, act, which is takes up about 60% of the play, we see him then uh, basically trying to ignore his Wally side. Uh, and, he, you know, he has these little flashes where he seems like a normal, competent person, but you know there's just something roiling underneath there. You know, we, we he, there's something not right with this individual. He's probably not dangerous. He's probably one of these people who is going to live, die, and no one will give a shit about him once, once he's dead. But, you know, that's the way it is with most people.